I want to talk a little bit about the nature of questions. There are at least two types of questions, open questions and closed questions. We're going to go through and look at the different types as we go through the rest of this video. So closed questions are what we call convergent, meaning that they typically have a single answer and will often end the conversation. Open questions are divergent, meaning that they often have multiple answers and help facilitate question, questions and conversation. So let's go through and look at some examples. What is the distance between the earth and the sun? This is a type of question that has basically one answer. So we would consider this to be a closed question. We could rewrite this question um, and make it more open and try and facilitate conversation by saying something like, how do you think scientists figured out the distance from the earth to the sun? So this again would be an example of an open question on the same topic. So you might be able to see how the closed question, what is the distance, would shut down the conversation. Whereas, how do you think scientists figured this thing out could lead to a very fr fruitful conversation about lots of different topics related to how to measure those distances in space. Here's some more examples. What is the fundamental theorem of calculus? This is likely a closed question. Um, one set answer, you might be able to have a discussion as to what that is, but the question itself really has one answer. And once it's answered, that probably shuts down the conversation. In what ways do you think calculus could be thought of as the study of how things change? This is an example of an open question. It's going to elicit discussion and conversation where people can talk about how and why they think calculus relates to how things change. What is a redox reaction? This is an example of a closed question. Again, once it's answered, the question's answered, um, and there's nowhere, nowhere else really to go because it has that single answer. Versus, what chemical reactions do you observe every day? Why do you think there are chemical reactions? Why do you think they are chemical reactions? This is an example of an open question, uh, two open questions, actually. Um, you will get lots of different responses from lots of different people about what chemical reactions they observe every day. Some of those may be redox reactions, some of them may not, but you can then follow up with why do you think they're chemical reactions and start to get at the characteristics of chemical reactions and therefore eventually characteristics of redox reactions. So these examples, start to illustrate uh, the differences between closed and open questions. Now, if you think about how you've seen questions or heard questions um, asked in class, have you ever had uh, this sort of experience in class? So I'm gonna run through a little skit. It's a little silly, but um, my guess is it's something that's fairly familiar. So the instructor asks, what is causing the car to slow down? Sally, what do you think? Hmm. Okay, Fred, what about you? Okay, um, how about you, Jose? Yes, yes, did everybody hear that? Friction! So in that little silly skit, um, you can probably see that the teacher's both facial expressions, um, their verbal, nonverbal interactions, really shut down any sort of discussion and probably made it so that other students didn't even want to answer um, because of how Sally and Fred were sort of shut down. Their answers weren't valued because they weren't correct. The question was a closed question. The instructor was looking for a very specific single answer, which was friction in this particular example. And the other students thinking and courage for even attempting to answer wasn't valued at all. So this sort of, sort of illustrates um, why open questions may be more beneficial in the classroom if, what if your goal is to try and elicit discussion and conversation, whereas closed questions really just shut things down. Now that's not to say that closed questions aren't useful. There are many times where a closed question is appropriate. Sometimes you just need that one right answer to be able to move on. 
But if you want students to be thinking about what's happening, um, getting their brains active, open questions are a better way of going about doing that. That's not to say that it's easy. We are trained to both ask and answer closed questions. Open questions require a lot more thought, both on the side of the instructor as well as the students. So we as instructors need to work very hard to be able to come up with good open questions that lead to the sort of conversations that we want and the sort of thinking we want to see in our students. So as part of um, the previous uh, assignment, you went through and looked at some pictures of rocks to go through and write some questions about it. My guess is, is that most of those questions were closed questions. Um, and so we're gonna go through and look at some example questions and then go through, uh, identify them as closed or open. Uh, and finally look at how we might be able to rewrite these questions. So good examples of how to rewrite questions are in the examples I just showed you. Um, instead of asking what is the distance between the earth and the sun, how do you think scientists figured out the distance between the earth and the sun? You're still gonna get that right answer of what is the distance, but you'll have a much more fruitful conversation about how you figure that out along the way. So let's pop back into our slides. So um, here are some example questions that I came up with the picture of the rocks. What types of rocks are they? What is the density of the rocks? What is the mass of the rocks? Why do some rocks have crystals but not others? How are the crystals formed? So if we go back through these questions um, again in order, we can identify them as closed or open. So what types of rocks are they? So this would be a closed question. So I've marked it with a C at the end. Um, once someone who knows enough about geology that can tell me what the rocks are, basalt or something else, I don't know very much geology, um, they would be able to provide that answer and that would be the end of the question. Similarly, what is the density of the rocks? We can conduct an experiment to go through and measure the density. Um, so that is also a closed question. There's just one set answer. Maybe there's a different answer for each rock because they're different types of rocks, but I would still consider that to be a closed question. What is the mass of the rocks? Similar to the earlier two, we can measure that mass, we know what it is, case closed, and we move on. Why do some rocks have crystals but not others? So I don't know enough of geology to know um, how much of a closed versus open question this is, so I marked it as both. Um, I think some people might have a very closed response to it. It's because of this process, but I don't know anything about that process. So that question for someone who may not know as much about what's going on could be more of an open question that could lead to more of a discussion. So I marked it as both because I don't really know. Um, and again, there are more than just open and closed questions. Some may be a little bit of both. It may depend on the audience you're speaking to. My last question was, how are the crystals formed? I'm assuming this is an open question because maybe there's more than way, one way to form those crystals. Again, um, this is showing my ignorance in the area but that's okay because our students are coming into our courses um, being ignorant as well, or at least slightly, and that's not a bad thing. They're there to learn and we're there to help them learn. So um, in your next assignment, you're gonna go through and identify the questions that you already wrote about the pictures as closed or open. And then you're gonna go through and uh, rewrite some of them, um, some of the ones that were closed initially and rewrite them as open ones. So if you're having trouble doing this, trying to figure out how to change a question, um, one easy way to go through and do it is to add a do you think at the beginning um, or somewhere inside of it. What do you think is the mass, the mass of the rocks? The do you think allows a little bit more openness um, than just what is the mass of the rocks. So adding the what do you think allows for the possibility of, well, people may be thinking different things and therefore you should expect to get multiple answers. So that's a little bit about open and closed questions. Um, in your next assignment, you'll go through and identify them and then rewrite some of those, um, some of those questions to be a little bit more open. So as you go through and do your uh, student sessions in the coming week, 
um, start thinking about the types of questions that you ask students or that they ask you um, and see if maybe you can turn them around to be a little bit more open so you can elicit a little bit more conversation than what we're typically used to in the classroom.